This year has by far been the most controversial year in Call of Duty history, which is kind of weird to say because the franchise hasn't really necessarily shied away from controversy in the past. We of course have seen things like No Russian back in MW2, and that ended up making mainstream news for the brutality behind it. Yet here we are in Black Ops 4, where it seems every single time we have another update go live, there is yet another spike in the drama amongst the community. And with the 1.19 update that went live earlier this week, surprise surprise we got yet another major controversy to discuss. Pay to win has been an on and off topic all year long, but more recently there's been a lot more validity behind it because for whatever reason the brand new DLC weapons are all locked behind reserves. And thanks to the 1.19 updates, Blackout has now also fallen victim to the plague that is the monetization overload here in Black Ops 4. What's up guys, Zacher Immortal here, welcome back to the channel, and as always, thanks for stopping by. Really quickly, I do want to give a huge shout out to anyone who has used my GFUEL code over the past couple of weeks since I announced my partnership. It is uh, pretty crazy to think how many of you guys are going above and beyond to support the channel, so seriously, thank you guys so much, y'all are the real MVPs. And as always, literally, if you are ever grabbing anything from the GFUEL site, you can use code IMMORTAL to get yourself a nice little discount. Anyways, Black Ops 4, man, sheesh. I swear every single time we see something good added into the game, there is also an evil counterpart added in too. Like literally, every single time we see something productive added in, there is always some major drawback that comes to the game as well, and I just frankly don't understand how it keeps happening. Well, actually, I feel like I do have a minor understanding of it, thanks to a massive bombshell that Kotaku released yesterday, talking about the development of Black Ops 4, and basically how Treyarch has been falling apart ever since the game started getting made. And that'll be something we'll bring up a little bit later on into the video, because it is, well, pretty interesting to say the least, when it comes to what exactly has been going on behind closed doors over at Treyarch. But as far as what is feeding the controversy train as of right now, well, that would be the addition of Blackjack stashes within Blackout. Now, the 1.19 update overall, I would say, was pretty good. It brought new content to all modes in the game in the form of contracts, a new variant map with Hacienda Twilight for multiplayer, humiliations, medals, and the sentry gun for Blackout, and hard mode gauntlets alongside a DLC 3 teaser for zombies. But to fit the stereotype at this point, there is so much good in this update, there has to be some bad in it as well, right? Well, unfortunately there is, and that is where the Blackjack stashes come into play. I don't know what it is about this man Danny Lee, dude, but every single time Blackjack comes into play, the game just gets pushed deeper and deeper into the massive hole that it's already in. First, it was the reserve content being completely overloaded with duplicates as is. Then it was the reserve content being flooded with parted out and individual unlocks like weapon camos and charms and all of that crap. And in between that we've seen the $30 hammer and terrible contraband streams comprised mainly of stickers. Pretty much what I'm getting at is if there is a negative piece of DLC content in this game, it somehow traces back to Blackjack. He's literally the, uh, the main villain of Black Ops 4, if you will. Forget the campaign, dude. There is no storyline needed to see how much damage this man is doing to the game. I kid you not. Regardless, though, man, the black market sucks, but surprisingly, that is not where Blackjack screwed up this time. Instead, Blackjack's stashes have now introduced pay to win into Blackout, which, let's remind everyone, because apparently Activision and Treyarch have forgotten about this, Blackout is a battle royale where pay to win does not work, all right? The sole premise of Battle Royale, literally the pedestal on which every single Battle Royale game stands, is the idea that everyone goes into a match starting off with the same chance of winning, and it truly is skill that determines who wins, not who has a better account or who is the higher level. You know, just because you are a level 200 doesn't mean you're going to beat a level two every single time. You know, even a blind squirrel finds a nut eventually. So Blackout, a game that should be based around everyone going into the match with an equal chance at winning, no longer has that element included within it, at least in the LTMs, thanks to Blackjack stashes. Which also really quickly, I just gotta say it, otherwise it's going to be in my head this entire video, Blackjack's stashes. Every single time I hear that name, I just picture Blackjack with a big mustache. Blackjack's stashes. Not the best name, Treyarch, I'm just saying, but I digress. These stashes and the sole purpose of them is to give players access to the DLC weapons. But here's the thing, we've already had access to the DLC weapons in Blackout for quite some time. The Daemon and the SWAT have both been floor loot since they were added in with Operation Absolute Zero. 
The Switchblade and the Rampage have also been available through the crate spawns since they were added in, but also all of those weapons were free to unlock if you grinded your way through the tiers in their designated operations. Obviously though, the new DLC weapons, aka the Locust, the S6 Stingray, and the Peacekeeper, are not acquired in that same way. Those are instead exclusive to reserves, meaning you have a very, very slim chance at unlocking them even if you play the game on a daily basis. You actually have less than a 1% chance at earning these weapons from a drop, and unless you have personally unlocked them out of reserves, you do not have any chance to earn them in Blackout because these weapons do not spawn normally like the other ones do. Oh no no no. These are exclusive to Blackjack stashes, as is the Vendetta, and the Tiger Shark and the Nifo Odi Club. Why is that? Hell if I know, dude. But what I do know is that these weapons, specifically the Peacekeeper, the Locust, and oh my god, the Vendetta, are so, so much better than the vast majority of the other weapons we have here in Blackout. The Locust is actually the strongest weapon in the entire game, believe it or not, because it actually has the chance to one-shot headshot an enemy, even if they have level 3 armor and 200 health. Now, no other regular weapon in the entire game can do that, not even the Paladin. Then you've got the Peacekeeper, which has next to no recoil, it is super, super easy to control, and it also has a ridiculously high fire rate, so it is essentially a hybrid of the Maddox and the ICR, making it incredibly lethal. And then you have the Vendetta, which you guys have been seeing me use in the gameplay all video long so far. And why is it that I am so stuck on using the Vendetta? Well, because it is a one-shot headshot, it has next no recoil as well, you can spam it like no tomorrow if you do have a good trigger finger, and it melts through all kinds of armor even without hitting a headshot. So pretty much, this gun is an all-out beast, and it is only available to those players who have hit tier 50, unless of course you do happen to stumble across it in a body bag, but that is not guaranteed in a game like it is to those who own the weapon. So unless you do hit tier 50 during this operation, you're not going to be able to use what is easily the best gun in Blackout right now. And sure, hitting tier 50 is easily doable by not spending a dime, but for those players who don't hit tier 50 during this operation, or maybe they don't even get the game until 3 weeks from now when Spectre Rising is over, they don't have a shot at the Vendetta unless it goes to supply drops like the other weapons. And there, unless you are ridiculously lucky, you have next to no chance at getting the gun anyways. For the Peacekeeper, which I would say is the second best gun in Blackout right now, same deal, it's in reserves, so unless you're spending an ungodly amount of money on supply drops, or you're playing the game an absolute ton, you're probably never going to see it, unless once again you get extremely, extremely lucky. So why is it that two weapons in specific here, that not everyone has guaranteed access to, are hands down the two most powerful and lethal weapons in the entire game? Oh, and uh, keep in mind, if you do have these weapons unlocked, you are guaranteed to get them out of a stash if you find one, and uh, in all honesty, they're really not that rare. I would say in the uh, 15 or so matches that I played with my friends Espresso, Ink Slasher, and Lazy the other night, we probably found a stash in 11 or 12 of those games, and we only land at Model Industries. That gives us an immediate advantage over everyone else who might not have the Vendetta, or the Peacekeeper, or the Locust, so on and so forth. So why on earth is that in a Battle Royale game? RNG is supposed to be the driving factor of making a Battle Royale game harder. It allows players to adapt and get better with a larger variety of weapons because you're not guaranteed the same thing in every game. But this system, one, ruins any RNG because I can guarantee myself a Vendetta if I find a stash. You know, I can guarantee myself a Daemon or a Peacekeeper or any other DLC weapon that I own if I find a stash. And two, it gives players who have the weapons an undeniable advantage. Now, these weapons aren't going to make you immortal, but they sure as hell are going to make it a whole lot easier to get kills, and that is an absolute ass-backwards system to have implemented in a Battle Royale title. So, where is this all coming from? You know, who is making these decisions? Well, Jason Schreier, a name you guys have probably heard on the channel before, just recently published a pretty lengthy article regarding the development of Black Ops 4 titled The Human Cost of Black Ops 4. And man, it gets pretty deep. I'm not going to go over the entire article today because one, it is pretty long as I said, and two, not all of it is entirely relevant to this video, but I do highly, highly suggest you guys give it a read through after watching this video because it really shines a lot of light on some of the rather large issues that we've seen in the past within Black Ops 4. So I'll link this article down below for anyone who does want to check it out. 
That said, a key takeaway from this article is the very brief mentioning of the microtransaction system, where Jason says that it's apparent players have grown frustrated with the increasingly prominent microtransactions that have been added to the game since launch. And some of the Treyarch developers have felt the same way about that. That means there are multiple Treyarch employees that are not happy about the MTX overload either. But Activision's never-ending quest for increased revenue overshadows all opinions from Treyarch themselves. So while Treyarch does have the say when it comes to the content within the game itself, how it is all priced out and delivered apparently is not determined by their final word, but instead Activision's. And quite frankly, for the devs included in that group of people who do not agree with the constant monetization, I really do feel bad for them because they're out here putting their heart and soul into making a game that they really want people to enjoy only for all of that hard work and effort to seemingly be overshadowed by the crap that Activision then pulls and essentially just forces into the game. Clearly it's not working Activision so why does the hole keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper with every single update? I just don't understand it. If you do read the full article, it is very clear that Treyarch definitely has a lot of problems internally, so I don't think they are entirely off the hook here, but are they the real villain? No, that's Blackjack. This has already been established. Well, okay, besides Blackjack, is Treyarch the real villain here? Uh, I just, I don't know, honestly. I respect the work that everyone puts into this game, but what I can't respect is the constant disregard for the community and the overall betterment of the game. I feel like at this point, with how much emphasis is going towards the black market and the microtransactions, Activision's only goal is to get players to spend as much money as they can on the game, rather than having players spend as much time as they can on the game. But I think with that said, that is effectively going to wrap things up for today. I think that's a good stopping point there. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated and it does really help out the channel. And of course, if you are new here and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty, feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on. That way you'll always know when I upload a new video. As always, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all G Fuel, Control Freak, and Respawn products. All of those links are found down in the description below. And once again, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.